In this lesson, you will learn about the Autoland system, including the reason for Autoland, the required airfield facilities, and aircraft components. You will learn the difference between fail passive and fail operational autopilots, and then the definition of an alert height and the actions required. Finally, you will learn some background information on weather minima and the three categories used to define auto land landing conditions. The most difficult phase of any flight is the approach to land. It requires the pilot to coordinate the aeroplane's flight attitude about all three axes, keep the aeroplane on the localizer and glide path and reduce the airspeed and rate of descent as the runway is approached. This is difficult enough. However, if we now introduce poor visibility, then the pilot's workload is greatly increased, and the chances of him achieving a successful landing diminish. Even with the introduction of a single three-channel autopilot, flying the approach as far as decision height, and assuming the pilot can see the runway, the chances of completing a successful landing vastly improve. However, the limiting factor is still the pilot. If he does not see the runway, he can't land and will have to go around. With a full auto land system available on the aeroplane and the required facilities at the arrival airfield, the autopilot system can carry out a landing with zero visibility and total cloud cover. For an aircraft to be able to auto land, it requires automatic control with a high degree of accuracy during the approach, flare and touchdown phases. To achieve this, the arrival airfield must have an instrument landing system, or ILS, that is accurate enough for an auto land to take place. An instrument landing system is a short-range airfield navigation aid comprising a localizer transmitter and a glide slope transmitter. There will also be an appropriate minimum standard of approach lighting. And there may also be marker beacons providing distance from touchdown indications. As well as marker beacons, there may be distance measuring equipment, or DME range indication, associated with the ILS to provide distance from the touchdown point. The localizer transmitter is positioned at the far end of the runway and provides lateral guidance to the runway threshold. It could be imagined as a short-range single radial VHF omnidirectional range beacon. The glide slope transmitter is positioned at the near end of the runway and provides vertical guidance down to the threshold, typically following a 3 degree glide slope. The ILS frequency is tuned by selecting the very high frequency localizer frequency, and that automatically tunes the pair glide slope frequency in the aircraft receiver. The navigation instruments in the aircraft can show localizer and glide slope deviation so that the pilot can fly the aircraft manually along the localizer beam and down the glide slope if desired. This information can be coupled to the pitch and roll channels of the autopilot so that the autopilot can follow the instrument landing system. The minimum requirements for an autoland system are two independent autopilots capable of following instrument landing system signals, two navigation systems capable of being tuned to the instrument landing system frequency and providing deviation signals to its own respective autopilot, and two independent radio altimeters to give accurate height above the ground to each autopilot. Fail passive or fail soft 
is defined as the ability of the system to withstand a failure without compromising passenger safety and without producing excessive deviations in the flight path, but removing its capability to complete an automatic landing. This is normally a two autopilot system and will be enunciated on the flight mode enunciator as LAN2. If an autopilot fails, it cannot carry out an autoland. Fail operational or fail active is defined as the ability of a system to withstand a failure without compromising passenger safety and without producing excessive deviations in the flight path, but after a single failure can complete an automatic landing. This is normally a three autopilot system and will be enunciated on the flight mode enunciator as LAN3. If an autopilot fails, an autoland can still be carried out and the enunciation will change to LAN2. Effectively, it is downgraded from being fail operational to fail passive. The alert height is a specific radio height, which is based on characteristics of the aircraft and its fail operational landing system. In simple terms, this means that should a failure occur of a required system above the alert height, the approach will be discontinued and a go-around executed. This is unless reversion to a higher decision height is possible, and decision height will be defined in the next scene. If a failure occurred below the alert height, it would be ignored, and the approach continued to complete the autoland. A precision approach and landing requires lateral and vertical guidance and minimum values of decision height and runway visual range. Decision height is a specified altitude or height at which a missed approach must be initiated if the required visual reference to continue the approach has not been established. Minimums. Runway visual range is the horizontal range along the runway that a pilot of an aircraft on the center line can see the runway surface markings or lights delineating the center line. ICAO low visibility operations are split into three categories, which are known as Category 1, Category 2 and Category 3. Category 1 is defined as a precision instrument approach and landing, with a decision height no lower than 200 feet and with a visibility of not less than 800 meters, or a runway visual range not less than 550 meters. The decision height is based on the barometric altimeter. Category 2 is defined as a precision instrument approach and landing with a decision height lower than 200 feet but not lower than 100 feet and a runway visual range not less than 300 meters. The decision height is based on the radio altimeter. Category 3 is split into three further categories, with Category 3A being defined as a precision instrument approach and landing with a decision height lower than 100 feet and a runway visual range not less than 200 meters. The decision height for all three is based on the radio altimeter. Category 3B is defined as a precision instrument approach and landing with a decision height, if any, lower than 50 feet and a runway visual range between 75 and 200 meters. Category 3C is defined as to and along the surface of the runway and taxiways without external visual reference. During this lesson, you have learned the reason Autoland was introduced, 
the minimum components required, and the difference between fail passive and fail operational.